Microsoft can't buy Activision Blizzard, and it's all Google Stadia's fault. The RTX 4070 drops in price even more, and Nvidia unlaunches yet another graphics card. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet this Thursday, April 27, 2023. And we're gonna start off today talking about a new player in the GPU space, because a lot of the conversation that surrounded Intel and them coming into graphics cards was who's gonna make these for them. We haven't seen too much hit the store shelves here on the Western side. We've really had Intel's limited edition graphics cards and then some ASRock Phantom Gaming ones that have launched and not a whole lot else. In markets like China, we've seen Gunnier release a few Intel GPUs, but now we've got yet another GPU company coming in, and that is Sparkle, which you might remember them because they used to make NVIDIA GPUs back in the day, the 7900 PCI GPU, not even PCI Express, and they stopped making them back in 2013 with the GTX 700. Turns out that a decade later, they want to get it back in with Intel, and they're showing off at least three different designs, which I think look modestly respectable. You've got the ARC A750, Titan, and Orc GPUs, and then the ARC A380 ELF GPU, no flagship A770 from them for this, but it's good to see more players entering the game. However, the UK has determined that there's not enough players that are going on in this cloud gaming sector, which is why they are not going to allow Microsoft to move forward with this Activision Blizzard acquisition. The UK antitrust regulator, the Competition and Markets Authority, which was one of the regulatory bodies that actually poo-pooed Nvidia's acquisition of ARM and essentially led to the unraveling of the whole deal. So this is rather important. They said, that Microsoft would have a market share of between 60 and 70% and have the incentive to withhold games from competitors and substantially weaken competition in this important growing market. But they're not talking about consoles. They're not talking about your ability to play it on your local machine at home, whether it's your PlayStation, your PC, your Linux machine, your other handheld devices that might exist, what have you, no. They are referring specifically to cloud gaming. They're essentially saying that because Microsoft has both xCloud and Microsoft Azure servers where they can deliver gaming from the cloud, that there's not enough competition in that market for them to move forward with this Activision Blizzard acquisition. And that with all of the moves that Microsoft made to provide games for 10 years, they said that it did not sufficiently cover different cloud gaming service business models, including multi-game subscription services, and that Microsoft didn't promise much to providers who might wish to offer versions of games on PC operating systems other than Windows. So not making any acquiescence to your ability to play the games on Mac via cloud streaming, your ability to play it on a regular Linux setup or potentially otherwise. And you just have to wonder, okay, there was one big competitor in the cloud gaming sector Google Stadia that passed away earlier this year, and if they were still around, would this have potentially still been a conversation that's happening? Did Google kill this? Obviously, this is not the end of this acquisition. There's a bunch of other regulatory bodies that can still have a say in this, and Microsoft themselves say that they're still fully moving ahead with it. They plan to appeal and saying that they're especially disappointed that after lengthy deliberations, this decision appears to reflect a flawed understanding of this market in the way the relevant cloud technologies actually work, which I'm not necessarily sure if I'm personally in favor of Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard, but I can guarantee I'm personally in favor of the cloud gaming conversation not really mattering a whole lot. And that just might be because I'm not in the space. I'm not dependent on cloud gaming services. Additionally, cloud gaming services are a very small percentage of the entire gaming market overall, but it also appears to be a fairly robust ecosystem at this point. Point. Besides the faltering of Google Stadia, we've seen the rise of GeForce Now from NVIDIA. We've seen the rise of things like Amazon Luna. There's other players in the space and in Microsoft just having data centers with Azure and then them also having xCloud and that's the reason they can't have Jablo 4 as a Microsoft title. I don't fully understand it. Kyler, does this make any sense to you? Microsoft can't buy Activision Blizzard because cloud gaming. Uh... Why would they be gaming in the sky? Airplanes need games too, man. Okay. I'm baffled by this. Let me know your take on this down below, whether you're for or against Microsoft acquiring these companies, and then whether or not you agree with the UK regulator's stance that cloud gaming is all, like, it's 
just so unimportant in the entire conversation, at least for me, to think that that matters. There's also PlayStation Now. I forgot to mention that. Like, it exists, but it's, it's like not a big deal. I don't know, which is exactly what was happening with the Bitcoin manifesto that was in Mac OS, because it turns out Apple's getting rid of it. This is something that was discovered all the way back in 2020, because starting in every Mac OS release since 2018, Apple has been hiding the Bitcoin white paper in Mac OS, which nobody knows really why. But in the latest beta update of Mac, Mac OS, it's gone. So now that it's been found out, got mainstream media attention, they're not gonna keep it in there anymore. I don't have an explanation. I don't even really have that many questions about it. It's not that, like it's just a weird, programmers do weird stuff sometimes. It, I'm sure that's exactly all we really need to say about it. And I don't know what Reese needs to say about UFD deals, but hopefully he has them today or he's fired, allegedly. Thanks, Therese, but you know what deal you didn't have, if you had any at all, was the RTX 4070 getting cheaper because as we've reported, there's been deals going on. Micro Center has a $100 Steam gift card. We've seen that sitting on store shelves. Additionally, it's been below MSRP over in European markets, and now it's getting even cheaper over in Poland with it reaching a low of 14% below MSRP thanks to a GeForce RTX week sale that they've got going on where the 4070 is now below MSRP by quite a bit. We've seen this from AMD. We had new FD deals yesterday. The 7900 XT is now below $800, which is a great sale for that level of card. But then Nvidia has never really been known to drop the price this quickly, this hard on the things that they have. And so seeing it below 14% MSRP, this is just, woo. We'll see if there's any moves that are made here in the US towards decreasing the price, but there are some moves happening when it comes to Nvidia unlaunching more graphics cards in case you don't remember, they unlaunched the RTX 4080 12 gig, which eventually became the RTX 4070 Ti. And at some point in the last few weeks, MSI launched a brand new RTX 3060 Ti. We didn't really talk about it here on Hot News because it was just a rebadging of something that already exists. There's not a whole lot interesting about it, except for they took their Supreme Cooler and put it on the 3060 Ti. So it's a big card for a mid-tier graphics card. But reports are coming out that Nvidia is forcing MSI to recall the graphics card completely because of the name that they used. They did not call this their Supreme card. They called this their Super 3X card. And in case you remember, Nvidia at one point launched a super series of GPUs back on the RTX 20 series. So allegedly the confusion is that this might be a new architecture, even though it's not, it's just a 3060 Ti. The idea was that there was a super series of the RTX 30 series, and that's why Nvidia doesn't like this happening. So the RTX 3060 Ti, Super 3X is being recalled, even though it was only for the Chinese market. It wasn't mainstream. It's gone. You can't get it anymore. But let's not forget the biggest tragedy of all was back when they did launch the 20 series Super Series. Just watched old Brett explain to you what happened. We have the RTX 2070 Super Jetstream from Palette. They were kind enough to send this over to us. Not to be confused with the RTX 2070 Super Jetstream from Palette. Uh, it, it'd be hard for you to understand the difference. One's the RTX 2070 Super Jetstream, the other is the RTX 2070 Super Jetstream. Thanks, NVIDIA. So NVIDIA, continuously clear as mud on what's going on. It's unlaunched, and I'm, la I'm launching this episode of Hot News. We'll be back with more of the hottest tech news tomorrow.